what do you what do you go by? Abdul, aka Chin. Chin is the main nickname. I can't lie. Okay. Been called Chin for since you're seven. Why? How did you get that name? I didn't choose it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know when you make these little silly jokes as kids with each other, yeah, with your boys. Yeah. And it just sticks. Yeah. So I remember, like, if I shave my beard, I got a pretty sharp chin, yeah. <laughs> this is why the beard stays now, yeah. Okay, okay. And. In year seven, I'm just having a little cussing with my friends. We're cussing our features. Look at your ears. Look at your this. Look at that. And then one, one of my boys, I'm still my boy now. One guy, I'm 11 years old, he said, look at your chin. And it's a feature that no one noticed before. And everyone started laughing. Ever since then, for the next, what did I say, 18 years of my life. What are you saying, chin? <laughs> but most people don't know this. This is something I'm actually opening up to now. Like, I swear to God, I've never told people this. Okay. Most people think it's, it's like, oh, do you knock people out? And you bang them in the chin. I'm like, yeah, 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 something like that. But it's nothing like that. No, that's funny, that's funny. Yeah, nicknames can stay. Exactly, but they stay for time. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're a, are you a content creator? Would you, is that your? I would like to say yeah, because yeah. there's not really a niche. Besides, if it's funny, I'd do it. Okay, that's yeah. a good way to look at it, yeah. Because yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't just stick to like, just Somali content, or just hood content. Yeah. Or just for I am kind of I mash it up. I even make gym content. I like I just I put all of it in under one bubble. If it's funny, I'm 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 gonna make it. But yeah. to put yourself under one category, I find that too hard, bro. And it kind of like I feel like it limits me. Yeah. So speaking about that, is that is that a full time thing or is it part time? Or always been a hobby. It's always been a hobby that I would like to do full time. Mm. You know, but it's something it's it's something that comes with being a creative. If you know what I mean. If you have interest in making content, making anything, whether you make music or whatever, you can never stop doing it. Yeah. There's been times I try to take a break and I, I still got the urge to make content. Yeah. I think I'll just be, I'll always be doing it. No, that's good. That's good. So you kind of express your way in yourself in that way? Uh, bro, once I got an idea in my head, yeah, I have to, I have to, I have to write it down, I have to get out. Yeah. It doesn't feel good unless it's out. That idea has to come out. Okay, okay. And are you working as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work in a special needs school. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. I've been working in uh, autistic schools for about six years now. Okay, right, right. Started off with the behavioural, then I shifted over to auti uh, autistic school. And it's just something that grounds me. Yeah. Something that keeps me grounded, something that I didn't realise I was actually good at. Mm. It's weird. And I have, I have, I have a soft spot for, 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 for those in need. No, that's good, that's good. And is it, would you say that's quite challenging then? Oh, definitely. It doesn't, it's not something everyone can do. Yeah. It takes people with a lot of patience and I've been blessed to have a lot of patience. It takes people with a lot of patience to deal with it because I'm dealing with young kids who struggle. Yeah. All levels of autism, like from, from the severe, unable, those who are not able to speak and they need your constant attention to those who you might look at them and they might not look autistic, but mentally they're suffering and people don't understand them. And you got to be there for them. Yeah, no, it's true. I've, I've got a friend who works in school with special, you know, kids with special needs. You say it's quite challenging and, and he, he even gets attacked sometimes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Well, the other day, well, I was just doing jiu-jitsu and I just had to block the <laughs> he was He wasn't happy with me. And I was like, just calm down, just calm down. But it's like, I don't take it neg like, in, a, in a hard way. He, he, that's his way of expression, like, you know what I mean? He doesn't mean it in a negative way. Yeah. At the end of the day, do you know what he said to me? He said, sorry, I'm so sorry, Abdul. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, it's okay, I, I know, it's just frustration. You know what I mean? But I worry for these kids, man, because like society, not everyone knows. Yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? It's true. Sometimes I even wonder myself, like, how many of the Mandem back in the days were autistic and people didn't know? Yeah, yeah, because I, I think, I mean, a lot of autism and ADHD didn't come up until, like, we were in school. Yeah. I mean, what, what age do you know? I'm 29. Okay, so I'm 30, so you're probably about the same. Yeah, age. bro. I didn't realise I had ADHD until two years ago. Okay, right, right. I, I had to do a diagnosis and everything started to make sense in my life. I was like, raw, this is why, this is why I'm always late. This is why I never like. This is why my brain's always like ticking one section. This is why I crash every three weeks. Everything starts to make sense. Like, and then I then I start looking at other people that I know, like people that got shifted, people that arrested, people that. Like, you know what? Looking at the patterns back in the days, this guy was definitely like some people. No, in a rude way, yeah. but some kids were crazy. Some people yeah, yeah. found joy in things you shouldn't find joy in, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and you used to wonder why. And then if you look at the upbringings, if you look at that the community, like a lot of these, a lot of them, um, autistic kids or like can easily be led astray if not, you know, looked after. And I wonder how many people could have been saved years ago if we focused on that, because teachers didn't care. Yeah, it's true. It's a lot true. of teachers didn't care. They don't want to admit it, but we all know we went to school, man. A lot, some teachers cared and some teachers did not care. Yeah, it's true. 
I remember there was a lot of, yeah, like you're saying, there's a lot of energetic, kind of crazy kids that kind of put into violence and they, they weren't sure what, you know what I mean? It just it, had a lot of They didn't know energy. where to direct it, innit? That's so it, yeah. If you had someone just to show them, listen, put that energy into this, you know what I mean? If you like this, put it into this, they could have been saved. Yeah. I don't know if it's like it in your school where they started giving the kids tablets and stuff like that. What, like actual, actual pills? Yeah. I remember the kids in our school were taking pills. Uh, some, it depends on the, the parents. Yeah. It depends on so some parents don't. But like, I notice with ADHD and autistic kids, they have a lot of energy, man. They need some sort of physical activity and they need to do something. Yeah. All that energy gets built up. They don't know what to, they don't know what to do with it. What, what made you uh, take a test? Were you having kind of like symptoms? Were you not sure? Oh, bro. I, what was this? COVID. Mm. COVID is pro probably the first time I realized I was depressed. COVID was probably the first time I realised I was actually depressed because you know, you, when everything gets shut off and you're, and you're, you're stuck and I'm like to myself, bruv, I'm at home in my yard with my family, like, everything's blessed, there's nothing like wrong, yeah. but why am I not happy? And then it, it didn't tick with me for a second until I thought I was actually depressed. Then I was like, why is this like reoccurring? So I tried to find things to like get out of it, start feeling this way. I'm not getting out of it. Then I realised over the years, this feeling would always come back. Mm. And what I would do, instead of like trying to directly fix the problem, I'll try to run away from it. So I'll try to find something else to do, try to go out, try to link the man them, try to do this, try to do that. But I wasn't trying to like really, really sit down and, and talk to myself mm. and figure out what's going on. Mm. Until I deep that, then after that I've done that, I've done a, like, um, done like a one year detox from social media, everything, just detox, just to figure out what I like, who I am, what, 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 what are the things I want in life? Then it was still occurring even with the detox. I said, really, then I realized it's not social media then. It's actually internal, it's me. Yeah, yeah. And then once I started finding out about ADHD in adults, it's so different to ADHD in kids. And I was looking into that, then, I, then a lot of the symptoms were me. I'm like, wow, this is me. And it's, it's not them ones where you're, you have a cold and you read symptoms and you think it's you. It's, like, it's really like people are talking about their experiences. I'm like, this is me. This all makes sense. And then. After I went for my, my diagnosis, when I spoke to the, to the therapist and everything, they didn't offer me meds, I didn't want meds. I just wanted to be clarified, I wanted to know what it was. Yeah. I'll, I, me, I'm the type of person, yeah, I'll, um, I'll go and find out a solution for myself. So like, if you tell me my ankle's hurting, I'm not going to go do physio, I'll, find it, I'll go watch a video and I'll, I'll, I'll find what to do myself. That's always how I've been. So once I've got the clarification, I started watching steps on how to control myself, how to know when not to be... Because I'm very impulsive. Mm. I'm very impulsive. And sometimes I've, I've realised in my life that's not good. Like someone will shout at me for something, I can just say, yeah. And I'm not, I haven't thought about the day, the week, what plan I have, whether my missus needs something, whether I'll just say, what, what, swear down, you want to do this? All right, cool. And then sometimes that's messed me up in the past. So I've got to learn not to be impulsive. I've got to learn um, when my body's tired, when my brain's tired, like, yeah, take a break, you know. Because the thing would be in, having ADHD is you can be hyper-focused on something. And hyper-focused means that, let's just say, let's just say we have a project, yeah? Bro, I'll go for probably 48 hours straight doing the project. And I'll stop thinking about food and I'll stop thinking about things, this and that, and I'll just say, yeah, I need to get this done. And I do that with my content a lot. Okay. I'll have a video and a normal person will say, yeah, I want to make this video tomorrow. I'm like, no, I need to make it now. I need to make it right now. Everything needs to pause. I need to make it right now. And then I'll do everything else. But sometimes doing that delays real life. And in real life gets delayed because you're, you're not living in the moment. You're living in, in, in this hyper-focused world where you put all in. I will do like, I'll, trading for example. I'll learn something about trading. I'll say, oh yeah, you know what, damn it, I want to learn how to do trading. Two weeks, bro, you just see me on my computer reading, learning, reading. And then after two weeks, I get crash. Yeah. So everything goes down now. I'm like, I don't have the energy anymore. I'm done. And then I'll get something else. What's this? Oh, calisthenics. Yeah, I'm on it. Two weeks. I'll be like, so I had to learn just to myself, just calm down. And I found it easier, as I got older, I found it easier to control myself as when I was younger, I was everywhere. Yeah, do you want to go to gym? Yeah, I'm down. Do you want to do class 20? Yeah, I'm down. Do you want to go to cinema? Yeah, I'm down. Do I'm just down for everything, not realising what I was doing yeah. and not realising why every week or two I was crashing. Yeah, because I think a lot of people get different symptoms as well, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's, I think there's ADD yeah. and there's ADHD. Would you say it helps with your content creating though, in a way? It does, because my brain don't stop ticking. Yeah. And then you kind of, you know, some people might put stuff off mm. where sometimes you might kind of jump in into it, you get it done. Like, there's been times I've posted stuff and I'm doing something and my missus is always with me when I'm doing something. And she's like, don't you want to just 
tweak it up a bit of fish. I said, nah, I'm done. This has to be posted like this. She's like, but you left the bin bag in the background. And I said, nah, the bin bag is what makes it unique. Leave it alone. <laughs> and then I've done it. And then all of a sudden the video's gone like, done well. And I'm like, I knew it. I knew it. Like, you know, sometimes it's weird. It just, it just works out for me perfectly fine. Yeah. It's like I have an intuition. It's like, it's, it's just like with certain things, if I, I know it's going to work regardless. I can, even people, I have intuition with people sometimes. I can look at people and say, yeah, this guy's going to be successful. Come a year and a half later, this guy's got a million followers. And I was like, I knew it. Yeah. I just knew it. The way he's going, like, I just, what's it called? Patterns. It's, it's pattern reading is very easy when, you, when, you, when, you, when you're either autistic or you have ADHD. Pattern reading is very easy. Okay. But it's not easy for us to read ourselves. Imagine that. It's weird, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, we've all seen your, your video, the, the one that kind of, I'd say, made you famous. <laughs> Yeah, the one that, that took off and they're still going off like, even even now it's, yeah. I still get people tagging me and I'm like oh yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> the first year was nice the second year is nice and, like, and now it's like three four years later like all right come on yeah. I mean some people might have not seen it who's watching this yeah it's a big I, world I know a lot of people have yeah it's a big world you, like I, I'd be surprised if I'm not surprised people haven't seen it because it always recirculates yeah yeah it does yeah yeah it's a feel it's a what, what would you call it a feel good video isn't it like it's yeah. not nothing negative about it so it's always going to circulate, man. And all right, so let's explain it. So you were in Nando's, right? Yeah. That part, yeah, that's the part. It's so mad. That's the part that I realised I need to be more spontaneous. Okay. Because I remember I was just, I was down that day. People were doing a little, like, creative link-up. There was a bunch of creatives that were doing a link-up. I didn't know anyone in that room, yeah? And I, I wasn't a photographer, I wasn't a videographer, and then I got to the link up and I realised all photographers and video, um, videographers. I'm like, what am I doing here, brother? <laughs> I thought it was like just people that wanted to make content. So I felt out of place, I didn't know what I was doing, I was just chilling. And then they said, you, then they said guys, if you want to come, we're going to go to Nando's. I was like, all right. By the way, I only knew one guy, the guy who, who was recording me. Okay. And I didn't even tell him the video idea. That's why sometimes being spontaneous is good. I just told him, whatever you do, don't stop recording. He goes, what are you going to do? I said, trust me, whatever you do, <laughs> Don't stop recording. Yeah. So I was waiting for my chicken to get served. That's after that, there was a viral video with an American guy saying, who made this burger? So I said, no, let's make a UK version. Mm. After that, I something just ticked. I just screamed at the top of my lungs. Oi! <laughs> but I did not know whether the guy was going to kick me out. Of the, like, I said, two things are going to happen here. Mm. Either this is going to go very well, I'm getting banned, I'm getting kicked out, someone's calling police, and everyone's telling me, you're an idiot. You're, you're, you know, why are you doing that? Yeah. Lucky for me, I was on the safe side. It went well. <laughs> Everything about that video went well. Who made the chicken? Who made it? Why? You, just hear, like, you hear someone <laughs> in the kitchen scream, why? And I was so happy he said why because I was like, how many times I want to say who made it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank God he said why. Because I love it. <laughs> and even the people that were doing it, all the creatives behind me who didn't know me at the time thought, generally at the end of the like, bro, I thought you actually vexed. I thought you actually want to like, flip the table or something. But the, no, the one thing that no one saw that was off camera was the security guard. <laughs> There was, a, there was an uncle, security guard, uncle, yeah, when I screamed, I thought he was going to come up to me. He left the store. He said, ah, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> <laughs> he thought I was vexed. He fully left the store, bruv. Wow. But he came and realised I, I wasn't angry. Like, ah, you confused me for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, that, that made me realise it's, it's, it's worth taking the risk because I posted that and I didn't think nothing of it mm. of my life. I thought, I thought, yeah, I'm going to post. Maybe my brethren might laugh. And some people are like, bro, I'm getting comments from, I'm, in, in, international comments. Love from Iran, love from New Zealand. I saw your a, a video in South Africa. Da, 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 da. I was like, wow, is this how this thing works? That's when really ticked, like, no, um, that was Instagram days, yeah? That's when it really clicked and made sense. I said, is it that easy to, to, to spread joy? So, I mean, would you say that that's like a, that was a big moment for you, a big change? That's, that's when it made sense, yeah, yeah. That's when it definitely made sense. That's, a, that's, that's when I, it felt good to, 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 to know that people found joy in my video. That's what it was. I, I never liked, and if you can see my content, I don't like to do any sort of negative hate attacking. If it's not positive, if it's not funny, I don't like to make it. It's got to have a little joke to it, it's got to have a little twist to it, but I don't, I'm not here to, to bring anyone down because, well, there's enough hate in the world, man. We all need to, something like, well, the last thing you want someone to do is pull out their phone and see something and that, 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 that makes them feel vexed or makes them feel angry, innit? Mm -hmm. I'd, rather, I'd rather you pull out your phone and you laugh a little or smile a little. Do you know how many views that got? Roughly? Boy, it's so many different platforms posted it. 
I lost track. I swear to God. Yeah. And even when it get, even when it reoccurred, I remember TikTok when I posted it on Twitter first. Okay. These days, Twitter was like the main app before Instagram yeah. was a, Insta was a bit down there, and there was no TikTok these days. Yeah, I, I, I posted it on Twitter first, and it, and it hit like just over twenty million. Twenty million. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of views. And then my my Instagram blew up as well from it. Like, I, I, I turned on my phone, I went from like 600 followers to 10K overnight. Wow. And, th and this, was, this, was, this was like three or four years ago, where it was hard. Yeah, yeah. It was really like hard to get followers because the algorithm wasn't really, it was a really weird way back in the days, isn't it? Yeah. And then when I got TikTok, I posted it and that helped my TikTok as well. Mm. But now, it's weird because now when you get attached to one thing, you're trying to drift off it. Yeah, that everyone remembers you. For yeah, who made that chicken? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I understand that. But I mean, yeah, like you said, it's a, it's a feel good, you know, video. I, I hope to make another one like that. Well, at least, at least one or one or two more, just like that. But that one, that one was so spontaneous. That was one of the, it was too natural. No one knew besides me. So like, it's hard to make something so like. If you see most videos now where people try to make a natural, it's all acting in it. You'll see a video of someone trying to do a prank and then it's like, uh, this, you can tell every, who's an actor and who's not. And that's what, that's what cringes me out sometimes. It's gimmicky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not a fan of that. No, I get that. I do, I do get a lot of restaurants uh, messaging me saying, hey, do you want to come to our restaurant and remake that video? And for the last three years, I said no. Why? Because it's not, it's not remakeable, bro. It, I'll tell you right now, and for everyone watching, it will be utterly cringe <laughs> if I do it again. It, won't be the, it will never have the same atmosphere, innit? Like, it, it just won't be the same. That was so unique at the time. Yeah. It's not something, it's not, there's something. I've seen a lot of people do this, yeah. I've seen that. And, and not in the UK, but that happens a lot in America where somebody goes viral for one thing. And yeah, my friend called it. He told me to be careful when I, like, he's, he, he's in media. He said, be careful, yeah. Don't get stuck in a pigeonhole. What he means is don't get known for just doing one thing. You remember the backpack kid? Yeah, I do. Was he doing that dance, isn't it? Yeah. And they rinsed him out. Yeah. To the point where now he tries to do something else, it's like, it's not really working now because you're just known for that. You're the backpack kid. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get you. That's and, true. And I never wanted to be like, known for just one thing. So if I did, in the beginning, if I did just say, say yes, 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 and I went to all, to all these restaurants, I started screaming, who made this, who made this? That's all you'll really be known for, isn't it? Yeah. And then you'd be stuck into a small little bubble. And if you tried to like, come out of that bubble, it'd be like, no, 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 come back down here. That's what you're good at. Don't do anything else. And I don't want to be, I don't ever want to be that guy. I think a lot of people would, wouldn't hesitate to just, you know, take a quick paycheck and, and but like you said, I'm sure I'm they'll thinking, get caught. Uh, I'm thinking longevity, man. I'm thinking, like, you know this game, this social media game, this, a lot of people think short term, but it's actually long term as well. Like, we're young, yeah, we're this generation of social media people. We, matter of fact, you know, people, a lot of people don't deep this, bro. We're going to be the first generation, it's probably going to have people in their 40s and 50s on social media. That when we get older, there's going to be content creators who are 50 years old. That we don't see them now, but we're going to be that generation, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. So talking about content, how would you describe your content? Or what's your, what's your target audience? Or who is it? Um, target audience for me, I do a lot of family, mm -hmm. fitness, husband and wife, kids related content. So if you're in that category where you're a dad, or you, you're in, you, you like family content, or you like your little, you know, jokes about gym content. That's me. So you do a bit of everything, you know? A bit of everything, honestly. I think I did see stuff about, yeah, gym, um, ethnicity, religion. Yeah. Even, even ADHD. I think I saw a yeah, post yeah, on yeah. that as well, which is good. So you're quite, you're quite diverse in... I try to be as diverse as I can. Yeah. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. Nothing, nothing with the man then? Nothing with the, with the guys? See... Before I used to, yeah. but when it comes to making content, you've got to work what you, what you have. A lot of my time is spent with my family, yeah. and, and if I don't, I'm either at the gym. These are the two places where really I'm at. Like if I, if I do see my boys, they're so spontaneous, there's no time to plan something. But how, like, most of my boys are parents as well. It's they're weird. Parents. They're parents, they're parents too, like their dads as well. Oh. Like oh, most of my right. boys have kids, so like we all have responsibilities. So it's not like I have a group of seven single guys who, who just chill every day. It's not like most of my guys are, are literally dads. So it's, if you someone, for example, like you, when it comes to social media, the best, my, my best advice for people is work with what you have. If you're someone who's in the office a lot, 
then go on and make your content about that because then that's what you have, that's what you have to use around you and it's, it's easier to make content that's than based on that. If you're someone who spends a lot of time in the gym, like me, then it's easier to make content in the gym because you're going to spend a lot of time there. Or if you're with your family a lot, then try your best to make content with them or around them because then it just makes your life a lot easier. There's no point in me going to make gaming content because I don't game every day. You know what I mean? And if I do game, there's no point of me recording myself because like, my kid might cry in the background <laughs> and make it hard. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. How, how often you go in gym? <sighs> Anything between three, four or five times a week. But you find it hard to fit in because you got it's my peace, man. Yeah, it's 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 the only time that like it's, it's the only time that's it, it's about me. All oh, right, okay. you know what I mean. Like it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not just about the messes or the kids or the bills or I'm doing this for mum. I'm doing this for my grandma. It's the only time where I'm, I'm working on myself. So I feel like it's really important for anyone to have a moment of their day where you're really working for yourself. So everything that I do in that in that room is for me. But it's not just for me, it's also, it benefits me, so I'm able, I'm in a good place, mentally, physically, to then further help everyone around me. That's a good way to look at That's it. That's how I would look at it, man. Like, if I want to live to, if, if God gives me like life, long life here, and I'm able to be 60, 70, I meet guys in my gym, they're 60, 70, and they've been going healthy, like, it's natural, they look good, and they look healthy, they're physically able to move, and I'm like, yeah, I want to be like that. I want to be able to move and healthy, so that my kids don't have to worry about me too much when I'm older. You know what I mean? And I'm able to help as well. So it's, it's, it's a long journey. It's hard. I can't lie. Sometimes I don't want to go. Sometimes I just want to chill. But in the long run, it benefits my family. Yeah. Oh, that's good. What's your, what's your best exercise? What's my best exercise? Oh, deadlifts, man. Deadlift? I love a deadlift. Can I, can I ask what your deadlift is? Deadlift right now. Just hit 200. 200. How many plates is that? 20 plates. 200. Uh... I guess one it one forty is free each side. Four. Four four, four isn't it? Four. Okay. Yeah. And that was a long time coming for me because I was just I've only only the last one or two years I've started to like get technique right and everything. Mm. But I've met some younger guys, man, they'd be like, bro, they're strong. Yeah. <laughs> information these days, because of because of the the way information is in the world, all the fake information gets de debunked. Yeah. And now you get proper information out there. Like when we were young, we'd go on YouTube, you just type in how to get abs and watch any Tom, Dick and Harry <laughs> that was doing crunches. If you never knew if it was right or wrong, you yeah. say he has crunches, so he must be right, or he's wham, so he must be right. But now it's like, yeah, don't do this, don't do that, just do this, um, calorie deficit, everything, all these things that we never knew when we were younger. Yeah. So these younger, I have one of my guys I train with, he's 19, he's in amazing shape. And I tell him, I can't wait to see you in a few years time. It's good when you start at that age, I think. A lot of the youngsters are quite, quite strong now. Oh, yeah, yeah, Quite yeah, strong, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fitness yeah. is big now compared to when we were younger. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a big thing when we were younger. It wasn't, no, no. But then it wasn't affordable as well. That's it, yeah. When, what age did you start? I'd say five, six years ago. Okay. When it was affordable, do you know what it is, bro? Because before we had, like, all these 24-hour gyms and pure gyms, they only came up a couple of years, recently, innit? Yeah. All these yeah. 20 pound a month or 16 pound a month gyms came recently. Back in the days, like, what was it, 50, innit? Yeah. Like a pink, like 50 pound to go to a gym and if you're like someone who's young, you're like, I want to spend 50 pound a month on this gym. And you go into the gym, there's a bit of old people in there and there's a bit, the vibe's a bit off. And then 24 hours gym came and it changed everything. Yeah. Because I go gym late. Okay. I go gym like 10, 11 p.m. Is it? I like to go just before bed. Well, and you wake up early for work and... It just, or is, that, is that your kind of cycle? It's That's just, your... yeah, it works better for me because I go there, I know it's quieter. I can get the session done quickly mm. and then the only thing I've got to do after is eat and go bed. So it just works out better for me. Rather than going out at four or five o'clock, it's packed. You're yeah. waiting for the uh, uh, weights and the equipment and bare people around. And then you still got stuff to do afterwards. Yeah. It's like the last thing I do. Would you, would you do any gym collabs on your like, TikTok or anything like that? Oh, definitely, man. I'd love to. I'd love to, definitely. I, I think that even as some of my friends said, I need to take it more seriously in terms of making co more content in the gym. Like I do have, I do have some plans in the next few months coming to start taking it more seriously okay, right. and, and making more of my content in the gym as well. Because I've spent a lot of time in there, <laughs> I, might, I might as well utilize it. Yeah, it's it's a massive industry now. It is, it is. It came up a lot during lockdown, didn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You don't have to be a bodybuilder just to make it these days. Yeah. You know, back in the days, you you're not a bodybuilder, you're not making no money from it. Now you can be anyone. 
look in decent to half shape, have decent to half knowledge, yeah. and make some pennies out of that. Yeah, as, as long as you're you're influential, I think people are watching your stuff and they're taking notes and they, you know, what I mean, they take you in. Then, yeah, yeah, then, yeah, 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 hundred percent. You'll you'll go far in the gym. You know what I mean? Would you say you're you're religious? Yeah, I think I think my definitely. It means a lot to me. Okay. But religion is very personal to me. Yeah. That's why I try not to make any religious content. Can I ask what what religion? Uh, Muslim. Okay. Yeah. So Islam is my religion. But the reason why I choose not to make any religious content is because I don't want to be misleading. I don't want to portray myself in any way that I feel like isn't me. Which doesn't necessarily mean, like, I might, I might share a, bit, a, a, a snap, I might share something, I might share something personally. But I don't want to get into the making content only for, like, you know, when people start yeah. posting or talking constantly about it. That's not for me, man. I think religion is very personal. It's a personal connection between me and God. And it works, I realise for me personally, it works better that way when I keep it that way. Because yeah. Yeah. then when it goes out and it becomes something I'm trying to talk too much about, then I feel like my intentions are not pure. Am I doing it because I want to? Or am I doing it because I want, I want views? You know what I mean? Okay, I am I being religious for myself? Or am, I being, or am I being religious to get more followers? Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get into that. That world is a bit complicated for me and I'd rather just stay out of it. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. And you're a, you're a family man? Yeah. Wife and kids? Wife and four kids. Wow. Yeah, bro, wow. busy guy. <laughs> busy guy. And, and you're 29? 29. What, what age did you get married and what age did you... I um, got married at eight, uh, just turned 19. My missus was 18. I wow. just, yeah. That's nice, man. That's nice. So we've been married for 10 years. Yeah. Has it been smooth sailing? Is, it, know, is, is marriage never. easy? Marriage, psh, no. <laughs> 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 marriage, and... Anything worth having in this life ain't, ain't easy, bro. You want a good marriage, it's not easy. You want good health, it's not easy. You want a good education, you want to have a good business, everything. There's going to be some rocky, rocky stages. And if you can, you know, if you can survive through the storm, mm. then when the sea is calm, you enjoy it. Yeah. And that's what it is. And I think because we got married young, and I think a lot of people who got married would, would, would agree with me, when you get married in your 20s and you haven't figured out who you are yet, but you still love someone, is the toughest thing ever. Because you're both changing at different rates. Like you're both, like, especially women are much more mature than men anyways. And I didn't deep it until I started growing up and I'm like, she's, but she's so on point and I'm not on point, like, you know what I mean? Then I'm just catching up now. But if you have good core values, like we never take a break. Yeah. We agreed. Like we, we set some good core values, like we're not taking a break. There's no, no such thing as I'm going to my mum's house. No, we, whatever, we're, whatever we're battling through, we battle for it together. You know, you stay firm. You have to talk. It doesn't go more than two days of silence in my, like when we're together. Like, no, no, what's going on now? Pattern up. What's, what, like, we have to talk. Otherwise, when you let that stuff run for long, you don't even remember why you're angry in the first place. Other things start, I don't know, like, what's it called? A snowball effect. Mm -hmm. You start, you, know, you throw a snowball down, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. And that's the same with your problems in, in relationships. If you don't address that straight away, more just add on to it, you get annoyed because he didn't throw the rubbish or he's speaking to me this or why are you staying up, why are you sleeping on the sofa, why are you doing it, why? and then they say, you know, that person is just irrit ir um, annoying to you and irritating you and you forget, you forget all the things, all the good things you've done for each other and you're all focusing too much on the, on the tiny ones, little, little problems, isn't it? Yeah, no, I, I get that. Would you, say, would you say marriage changed you as a, as, as a man or as a person? Definitely. Because you don't just think of yourself anymore. And then kids change you even. Kids is another level. Marriage is like your, 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 your happiness. You have to be... Look, I used to think before, she has to make me happy. But it's not like that. I need to make myself happy. She needs to make herself happy and then we enjoy it together. If I focus on her making me happy and she focuses on me making her happy, what happens when I'm down and she's down? We ain't got no energy. Then you start blaming each other. You weren't there for me, where were you? Like, can't you see that I'm in a bad mood? Why are you not caring? Like, you know what I mean? Like, so you're a human being, bro. Sometimes you crash as well, you get tired, you get this. You've had a long week of work, or maybe your family have given you, um, maybe you have family issues as well, and one side might not have family issues, or vice versa. You just have to make sure you focus on yourself. I learned a lot about making sure I'm good, so that when I enter the home, I'm bringing positivity. I'm not entering the home with no negativity, no headache, and 
she, she, her vice versa, like she has to come with the same energy. Whatever's happened here, here, we leave it there and we just enjoy our time together. But when you have kids though, that's another level. <laughs> <laughs> what, what age did you become a father? 20. 20, okay, so yeah. one year into marriage. 20 was my first one, 29. Well, I just finished a few weeks ago, it was my fourth one. When? My fourth one, it was just literally seven weeks ago. Okay, right, right. So I've got a nine year old, an eight year old, a five year old, and a month and a half. Wow. Wow. So, what, how did that change you as a. My first born as a daughter, she changed my perspective for everything. Because, you know what, I, I never had any sisters growing up, yeah. Just me and my two brothers, yeah. I never had any female cousins I was close to. I, my, my, my family is very male orientated. So my perception of women was very typical. Like, I wasn't a bad person in terms of like I hated them. I just had a very typical perception of women. Like, um, my mum was a tough woman, African woman. You know how they are, tough, very tough, which made me tough as well. But when I had my daughter, I unlocked a soft side of myself I never knew I had. I never knew I could love or be that soft to a human being like I am to my daughter. My daughter knows me t too well. She'll come up to me right now and ask for something. I don't know how she patterns it out of me. <laughs> She'll find a way to pattern it out of me. I, can't, I, I don't know what it is, but then it just, even my perspective of women now, because of her, has changed. Like, I, like you, when you have a daughter, you just, you just value them so differently because you realise, you watch them grow up and develop and you, I know one day she'll be a mother, mother hopefully, inshallah. And I know like, she'll be a grown woman and I just want her to have the things I never had. But also, when you have boys, it's like, like, I have sons as well, so like, with my daughter, I'm soft, I'm relaxed, oh yeah, don't, don't worry darling, daddy. My boys, get up man, toughen up, get up, no, I'm not having this, you know what I mean? You're, you're a bit more, you're a bit more, I don't want you to, 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 to get hurt or to get nothing in life, I need you to be strong, I need to be tough. But with her, I want someone to be there to protect, I want you to be tough, but I also need you to, to, to make sure you see the, the mistakes of, and flaws of men that other women can't see. I want her to know all this, and my boys, I'm like, you need to be tough and to protect your sister. Oh, don't worry, darling, I'll be there, I'll be there for you. So it's, 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 a, weird, it's a weird thing, man. Yeah. It's a weird thing having, having boys and girls, well, one girl and three boys. It's a weird question, but is it kind of scary being a father in, in this all day and the time. age? I think it's, if you come from a household where you didn't grow up with your dad, or you never had a dad in your life. When my dad was in my life, I didn't grow up with my dad. My parents were divorced when I was younger, yeah. So I didn't grow up with my dad. It, and me and my brothers have discussed this in life. I have a younger brother, he's got two boys as well. And we were, t we were talking the other day. And I was like, do you find, because dad was never, like we never lived with dad, we didn't, we didn't know how to be a dad in the household. Like, I used to go see my dad. I could see my dad whenever I want. I could speak to him, everything, but he wasn't in the house. Yeah. Which means like when I was younger and I was being cheeky, I could get away with stuff. You know what I mean? And it made me realise how, how much of a difference it is literally having your dad at home. And it made me realize at the beginning stage, I didn't know what to do. I kind of done everything. Like, I was like, do, do, I, do I give them everything? Do I stop? Where's the limit? Like, am I being too nice? Am I being too strict? Because you have no perception of it. Like, I have a perception of my mum. My mum's always been in my life. I knew and when it came to, like, bro, like, if, if my missus says me, ask me to help, I'm like, yeah, I can cook and clean and help. And then I'll do that every, every day because I see my mum do it. Yeah. But then the, the, the assertiveness of being a dad, I didn't know what, what the level was. Yeah. So I didn't know whether I was being too strict. I didn't know if I was being too soft, and sometimes you gotta take a step back, and you know it's good to have a, a you know good brother I can talk to, and some friends who are dads. We all talk about this stuff as well. Like I ask my friends who are dads who have their dad around, like how is it like you being a dad? And I know we just have the discussion, but it's a real eye opener, yeah. and I'm sure everyone who didn't grow up with their dad probably feel the same way. Because I have some friend, I have a friend who never grew up with his dad, and he feels the same way. Like yeah, it's like you're being thrown into the deep end, and you just don't know what to do. And you're learning as you go. You're never wrong, but you're never right. Yeah, no, I understand. You said your, your mum and dad divorced at a young age? Yeah, yeah, um, I was about 10. Okay, right. You, you kind of remember everything? Oh, yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah. Uh, my brothers, I remember everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what was it like growing up for you, as in like, just in general, like where you lived? Embarrassing. Okay. Because it was like a taboo, isn't it, in the culture? Oh, right, right. Like divorce was like a big taboo in the culture. Now it's, everyone, you hear it, like it's like it's normal news now, yeah. isn't it? But back then it was like a taboo. And then I remember when my brethren used to ask me, where's your dad? I'm like, I used to lie and say, yeah, he works abroad. Because mm. I just couldn't just own up and say that he doesn't live here. Mm. Where, where did you grow up? Is it West London as well? Uh, Acton, then, then Bush. Oh, right, right. 
And what was the area like? It was rough. Acton was rough back then. Yeah. I went to Acton High School, bro. That was Acton High School, what, it was in 2005 to 2010. It was rough back then, bro. Yeah, I can imagine. You don't want to be, <laughs> you don't want to be lacking anywhere by yourself. Like these kids now, they think, they think like, okay, stuff goes on now. Well, stuff has been going on for a hundred years. Half the stuff that's going on now, it's nothing new to what was going on before. The only difference is back then people could get away with stuff. Yeah. Like back then you get robbed and then you see the same guy robbing you walking down the street smiling. Like it'll be that, and you, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Now yeah. someone gets caught on CCTV, it's done for like, yeah, oh, police might catch him in the next day or two. Because they got all the footage, they don't, even, they, don't need, they don't need witnesses now. They got all the cameras, they identified him, they seen him, you match the description, boom. Back then, people don't want to snitch. This guy in your estate will rob you and you can't snitch because he lives in your estate and you can't say nothing, you know what I mean? Like, it was little dumb things will happen. Yeah, acting was tough back then. The new actor now, it looks beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't know if you, if you, I don't know where you live, but you know all these new buildings that have been coming out, bro? Yeah, they've knocked down the heart, like 80% of the council estate yeah. and put all these brand new buildings. It's not the same acting, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so Shepherd's Bush, they've got the Westfields there, don't they? Yeah. I guess that, that changed, was... That changed, that changed everything. Yeah. Is that where you kind of went growing up and stuff like that? Bro, I went to Bush Market. Before Westfield. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah, before Westfield, we used to go Bush Market, man. Remember those Lot 29 tracksuits? Yeah, yeah. That's where I used to cop them from, bro. <laughs> Bush Market. I remember E day, I come out with my Lot 29 track. I was so happy, bro. Like, these kids don't know. They have no idea, bro. Uh, Bush Market, but Bush was different back then. Bush was majority Caribbean area. Same with Acton. When I was growing up, the people around me were majority Caribbean. Now it's, now it's diverse. Now it's so diverse. Now it's got Algerian, Moroccan, uh, Eritrean, Ethiopian, mm. Somalian. And now that like the the, the, the ethnicity is completely switched up. Mm. And a lot of a, a bigger of a North African Arab community now in Acton and Bush than there was before. Yeah. Do you, do you remember any kind of particular stories like from growing up or anything you've seen in acting? Oh yeah, hella. Hella, hella stories. I remember being a little kid and hearing the first gunshot. <laughs> I think it was like fireworks. You know the, the thing, that you, can smell, you can smell the residue. I don't know if you, if you I'm not saying that you, you might have seen it, but like if, you have, if you've been next to a gun that's gone off, it has a little smell to it. Yeah. And I remember just hearing my first pop pop. I'd be like 12 years old and I'm like, what's that? And you see a car scrolling off, you think, what's going on? Is it a race? You're so, you're so clueless as a kid, isn't it? Yeah. You're thinking, is this a race? What's going on? And then the police come and, and tape it up and you're like, oh, oh, okay. That's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. But, you know, some people think, I don't know, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a sad experience. It's just this is where you, where you grew up. You know what I mean? You see, you, it, it makes you street smart. And I think that one of the biggest blessings I could have beyond, in life is being street smart. I'm so happy I'm street smart. I'm so happy I had this kind of experiences where I can kind of see or smell out danger from a distance where some people can be so oblivious to it. Yeah. Like you see people get robbed every day and I'll be like, how did you not notice this guy was following you for 10 minutes? Or me, head for like, even when I was on my way here, I'm like, okay, I don't know this area, so let me turn my music off and let me pay attention to my surroundings because I don't know where I am. I'm by myself. Let me put my phone in my pocket and let me just walk properly. But some people be headphones on and everything, just blasting, just bopping off and it is, you know, and not knowing, like, do you know how hood this, this street is like? I've come from <laughs> Shepherd's Bush, a nice area, and I just I came off a station and there was no connection to my phone. I knew I was, in, <laughs> I knew I was far from home. <laughs> no, I get you. You know, being, yeah, growing up in London, I feel like we are, we are quite street smart. And, you know, kids are naturally naive growing up. Oh, definitely. Until, until they kind of get those experiences. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about your kids growing up in, in London, especially? Like, do you feel like, I don't know, like they need to go through certain things? Do you feel like they're gonna see things? Do you try and hide things? No. Um, there was a video I watched on the parenting and that one guy had a phrase that I really like, in which he said, let your kids do dangerous things carefully. Okay. Don't shield them too much. Be observant. Like sometimes, like my daughter could be out with her friends and, they, and even her and her friends could be having a situation but I'm not going to intervene, I'm going to wait and see how it, how it plays out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Or giving my kids a leeway and say, yeah, yeah, you can ride your bike this far ahead of me but stop at this point. Do you know what I mean? I, don't, I want you to know danger, understand, pay attention to your surroundings. I feel like if you're cooped up, I know, too, I know a few people that were cooped up their whole life and then let out at uni. And we heard the stories of these people, you know, you know what happens, you cooped up your whole life, you've never been anywhere, you've never gone anywhere, you never stayed out late, you've never touched this, you've never seen that. And when they, when, they, when, they, when they finally come out, they go wild. 
And there's some people that have seen it from early, you have seen what happened, they've seen, you've seen the consequences and say, yeah, I'm staying away from this. Yeah. At the same time, be present. Like, I like to be present. So I, like, I always tell them, listen, I know where you are. You'll come back and you know, have the communication with them, let them know you're present. Because kids are smart. They know who cares and they know who doesn't. They know what adult they can, you know. There's a smarty word called koalas. It's like, work your way around. And they know what adult, yeah, I can't. They don't like set teachers. You knew what teacher was serious and if he was there, like, yeah, you man, be on job, sir's watching us, innit? And you knew, yeah, this, this one's a bit dopey. He's gonna <laughs> look around the corner, we can, we can get out of it. Yeah. With your content, what's your, what's your goals? Or what, what are your goals in general? Bro, my goals, my goals change every two years. Like, like yeah. you know, you get older, like when you were young, you just, it was money. Yeah. And then like, yeah, money is nice, but then you, start to, then you start to learn that a lot of people who have money die or commit suicide or are not happy and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, I want money. I think uh, my goals, oof, it's a long time since someone, someone asked me that. I, I had it in my head as well <laughs> when I was coming here about my goals, you know. Happiness, I want to be happy. I want to be happy and I want the people around me to be happy. Whether that means financially, whether that means mentally or physically, you know what I mean? Whatever that could be, it has to end with happiness, man. Yeah. I think we, sometimes we just we end up forgetting to be happy, bruv. Focus too much on chasing the paper that you realise you, you've lost loved ones, you've disconnected from family, you've disconnected from friends, and now you're... And you, you, there's, a new gen, there's a new trend where people say, I can cry in a Ferrari, but mental health is not a joke, bruv. It's true. It's, it's not a joke. You don't want to be that person in a Ferrari with mental health problems. What's the point of that? Yeah, no, I agree. You're in a Ferrari with mental health problems, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> with, with that being said, what, what would you say your vices are? Like, what's your outlets? Like, how do you... You know that some people drink, some people smoke, some people do whatever, a party with your friends. What's your kind of, like... Alone time. Alone time, okay. Uh, bruv, I, I didn't realise it a few years ago. Alone time, like it could be alone at night or it could be alone in the day, whatever. Some alone time where you like just turn your phone off and just chill for a second. It'll be 30 minutes or an hour, just chill. And because there's so much distractions here. Yeah? Okay, for me as a dad, I got my distractions. I'm always thinking about my wife, I'm always thinking about my kids, what's going on, the rent is to get paid, I need to make this video off. I got just gym, gym session, have I hit my target, I got work target. That sometimes you forget to think of yourself. And for you, it could be like you're trying to get this business running, you've got to get this running, your mum needs this. Other people, it could be like, my dad's ill, I've got to go check him out, then I've got to check my friend, then I need to make sure I need to get this, have I got my new... You know what I mean? Like Sometimes we're so disconnected with ourselves because we're so worried about what's around us that we put, we put ourselves last and we don't even have any time where we sit down. And then you go home and you put on Netflix, and you, you still not, that's not alone time because you know you're consuming something else, yeah? Yeah. And whatever you consume is going to do something to you. You haven't had a minute just to sit down and think. And then you crash. So my biggest thing is alone time. Like whether it's going to the gym or that. I might, instead of like taking my pedal or driving or cab, I want to walk 30 minutes to the gym. That's going to be the moment I just chill out, disconnect, no phone or music and talk to myself and just say, yeah, I need to get this done. But you know what, Abdul? You're doing good. Mm. You're here, you're breathing, you're alive. Life's good, you know what I mean? Like it could be worse. You got to always remind yourself, it could be worse. There's always someone else in a worse situation than you. Yeah. No, I think, it, yeah, de it's definitely good to be grateful in life and kind of, you know, take moments out for yourself and realise what's around you. You do, you do, man. You. you people get too comfortable. Like, even when you show your brethren, yeah, if you show your brethren constantly, you start to be worried about being by yourself. Mm. But if you can't even enjoy your own company, it's, that's, that's, a, that's a bad thing. That's true. I think, I think a lot of people, would you, would you say they're scared to be alone? Yeah. A lot of people. That's where they search, that's where they're chasing love or chasing... Like even me, I'm married, but I tell people, if you haven't learnt to love yourself yet, don't go chase marriage or chase love. Mm. If you haven't loved yourself and enjoyed your own company for a minute, you can't, because then you're going to be so dependent on that person that you're going to put so much pressure on them, it's not going to work out. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure a couple, I'm sure you, I don't know if you, like, you heard stories of crazy exes, didn't it? Like, you hear these people that just, <laughs> you're like, where are you going? Where you been? What are you doing? Who's this person? Because they're so scared to lose you, they can't even be by themselves. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. All right, so earlier we were talking about... Um, let me ask, where, where are you from? I'm Somali. Okay, okay. Because earlier I was asking what's the correct way to say it, because obviously some people... 
I've yes, heard say, yeah. some people say Somalian. <laughs> the word that don't make sense. Don't don't say Somalian to a Somali. That's the worst thing you can say. It's just so. It sounds so weird. It's Somali. You're Somali. We are, we are Somali. We speak Somali. Yeah. Somalian just like an alien with some. And <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. It's just not the. No, like, we've been trying to correct people for the last ten years. People are still saying Somalian. Yeah. It, some people let it slide. Some people, like me, I'll just correct people and say, yeah, that's not the right terminology still. So the right term is Somali? Somali, yeah. Okay. And the country is? Somalia. Somalia. But I'm from Somaliland. Okay. That's when it gets complicated now. Yeah. Because the country is actually divided. Okay. So it's two separate countries or? Yeah, two different co separate governments. And by the way, I never knew this until I got to year seven. <laughs> my whole life, I was like, yeah, Somalia, Somalia, Somalia. And then my dad corrected me. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, there's two separate governments yeah. due to when they were colonised. One side was colonised by Italy, the other was colonised by Britain, which is some island. And yeah, same language, same culture, same people, just different governments. Um, people from Somali or Somali land, would they classify as black? That's where it gets tricky. Okay. Because... The whole classifying yourself as black thing, for someone like me who grew up here, I get it. But you're going, if you're speaking to someone of an African descent who's lived in Africa, who only identifies of their country of origin, it doesn't make sense to them. Because yeah. if you go and speak to an African, an African speaks to another African, that, okay, Africa 90% black, you're not going to say to them, where are you from? I'm black. No, they all state the country they're from. Yeah. It wasn't until I came here, that when you're applying for stuff, you know, what are you, black African, black, that's, that's, where, that's where it derives from. And then I just, me personally, I just think to myself, all right, cool, black African, that's, that's the only thing that's here. That's what I'm going to take, that's what I'm going to say. I wouldn't say I don't identify as black, because that's a bit silly. But I can see why historically people don't want to be seen as just as a colour. I feel like if you're from Caribbean descent, African descent, that should be where you're, where you're stating first. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 the colour thing is a bit low because it's more of an American flex. It's not really of a British flex. Brit Britain, like when you come over here, you, you are British Somalian, British Ghanaian, you know what I mean? British Jamaican, like they will always put your country next to it. We never used to say British black. Yeah, yeah. And Br yeah. We never really said British black, bro. Yeah. British, the whole black thing came from this whole American culture that we kind of like took in here and everyone starts saying you're black. Because more, more time people knew where they were from. Mm. And unfortunately for the um, African Americans, unfortunately due to slavery, they don't know where they're from. So that's why they stick to black American, you know, black African American. Yeah, so some people, I mean, it's a complicated world these days. You have, you have, to, you have to be respectful to how people want to identify as. If someone does not want to be identified as black, I guess you've just got to respect it. And a, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of Africans and a lot of Somalians don't want to be just known as a color. Yeah. They want you to like, you, like I'm, I'm from Somalia, please say I'm Somali. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's fair enough. I think that's fair enough, yeah. yeah. I, hope, I hope that makes sense. It does, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But then some people to take it very personal and then there's like, there's race war. Like, I, don't know, I don't know if you've been on TikTok lately, that there's bare race wars, man, between the, the I want to say it, the black community, whether you're African or Caribbean, there's a lot of race wars now, like, of like, where are you from? No, this person's ugly, this person, it, bruv, it's so toxic. It's so toxic and it's unhealthy. And me personally, I stay away from that side of TikTok. I don't get involved in it. Because if you're getting involved in it, what happens, what you see happen is you can have, an, you can have an, like you right now, you can have an innocent mind, yeah? yeah? You haven't been involved in this situation. You open up TikTok, you see a, a, a Somalian or East African person slandering, what country are you from, bro? Sorry. Uh, Jamaica. So, oh, sl oh, slandering Jamaicans. Mm. Naturally, you're going to get angry. And then what it does is TikTok alg um, algorithm is gonna throw bit other Malis at you, or a bit other Somali people who are doing the same thing. That's how the algorithm works. So now you, in your head, you're like, oh, I've just seen 10 Somalis cussing Jamaicans. They must all hate Jamaicans. Oh, I and see. And then what happens yeah. on our side is, we get the opposite. We get all the videos of the, uh, of the West Africans and Jamaicans cussing Somalis. Because I remember I was clicking on one video, and then the next video was someone else cussing Somalis, and the next video was someone cussing And then what it does is, in your head, you start to think, they must all hate Somalis, and then you fall for that trap. Yeah, so it's kind of feeding you a, a prejudice. Yes, yeah. and then yeah. you fall for that trap because bro, I grew up in bro, I grew up in Acton, West London. I grew up in Bush, 
Like, I used to joke around in my Caribbean, Caribbean bedrooms, but we never had beef like that. We were Somalis and Caribbeans, like, we never had beef like that. But then you'd hear stories of other people, maybe the older generation, maybe the first Somalis that came up here, telling us it was tough for them, because people never used to identify them as black. I've had a lot of stories of the older, like the ones who are in their 40s now, saying, yeah, we're in school, they tell us we're not black. So they used to say, all right, cool, we're not black, and then they used to say Somali. But it, obviously, that got washed out in my generation, but it's coming back again now. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you, do you remember hearing that when you were younger? No. I mean, to be honest, I think where I grew up was, it was different ethnicities, but we didn't have too much but of... I didn't, I didn't, I, I, yeah. me growing up, I never had that issue. Yeah. I never had an issue when one of my Caribbean brothers like, we started arguing about race and colour and stuff. We never had that issue. Yeah. We knew we were black, and then there was like, where are you from? Somalia, Jamaica, Ghana, Nigeria. It was like, you know what I mean? But the way the internet is giving so much energy to it, it's toxic. It's making it negative. It's yeah. very negative, man. That's not good at all. <laughs> and, and a lot of kids are on TikTok, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. So now they're feeding into it and they're seeing adults talking about this subject that they never even thought about. Mm. And you're, cause, you're causing a division within a... For me, it's a division within a community of the same people. Would you say there's quite a negative side to the internet as well? Definitely, man. Definitely, it's like a library, bro. You, you, you go in, you can get to the dark side, we can get information on things that you, you like, that's disgusting, disturbing, and then there's this side where you can actually benefit from. There's information that could, could do you good, that could be like, you know what I mean? You can get books on some dis disturbing stuff. Mm. Same with the internet, you can watch videos on disturbing stuff. TikTok's algorithm compared to like Instagram. Instagram, okay, like Instagram, there might be a video and it, there'll be a little thing saying, explicit video, are you sure you wanna watch, you know what I mean? You don't get that on TikTok, you just swipe and you see. You ain't got a choice. <laughs> And sometimes you, you might even not want it. So you're like, yeah, let me just... I've tried to fix my algorithm by liking other stuff yeah. and they're still dashing it my way. <laughs> so there's no way you can avoid it. I think sometimes you need a detox from it. You need to sometimes just put your phone away yeah. and talk to people in real life, man. Do you, do you let your kids go on social media? Do they, do they have TikTok? And... Not yet, no, no, no. Okay, right. You try to kind of... Working in a school and seeing how kids who have been exposed to it at an early age behave compared to the kids who don't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise any, any parent. Until, Those, until what age? Until they're teenagers, at least. Yeah. Until, until their brain development is at, is at a certain age where like, they can really identify what's the real world and what's not. Mm. Like, the same way we watch a video, you, you can tell like, this person's putting up a front. Kids can't, kids can't tell that. Yeah, like you're talking about the pranks, yeah. Yeah, yeah. pranks yeah. or even like, um, you have internet personalities. You have people that have a persona online. It's not their real life persona, it's just how they act online. Kids think that's real life. Yeah, and then they start picking up on these things and they start behaving like it and they start, you know... I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I, I, it's hard, man. I've seen kids grow up too fast, bro. You get, like, these 8, 10-year-old kids, little boys, bro, and they think they're grown men now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Talking about stuff about women that you're like, bro, you're not even mentally ready. <laughs> like, your, your, your body hasn't caught, caught up with your brain. You're talking about stuff, but... <laughs> you're not even... They're talking about stuff and they're not even aroused by it. They're just talking because they hear that's what the man them are saying. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And then you get the opposite with the girls. The girls are now wanting to wear stuff and dress a certain way because they think this is how you have to dress. Yeah. There was a video the other day on TikTok of this guy asking the girl like um, how old she was. She was 15 and I'm like, I swear to God she's at least 22 because of the makeup and what she's wearing. Oh, right. Right. And it's, it's scary to think mm. like kids don't want to be kids anymore. Kids want to be older. Yeah, taking away the, the innocence and the youth. Yeah, so you go, it's all going, it's, it's going young. away, man. So, I would advise, like, let your kids be kids, man. I wouldn't want to give my kids social media yet. That's too much information for them to handle. Right, it can go from them watching, like, a funny video to something about racism, then politics, then this, then that, and that's too much for them to handle. Mm. So me personally, no. Not yet. No, fair enough. Yeah. When we're talking about kind of identifying as... Obviously, you, you work in a school. Yeah. <clears throat> There's that... That thing that's going on, there are a lot of kids, you know, talking about, you know, LGBTQ plus, and are they talking about identification or not? not yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, they are. It is a stick. It's a, it's a, it's a um, sticky subject because you're working in an autistic school, so you don't want to be misleading at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I personally would respect whatever, whatever the parents say. You know, they're still they're not adults. They're still under the, their parents' care. Mm -hmm. So if the parents are saying like, oh, we don't want to speak about this, then I'll be like, all right, cool. If the parents are saying, yeah, we're trying to provide help for him so he can identify himself as this. I said, all right, cool. Whatever the parents are saying, then respect it. 
that's, that's, that's as far as I go, but I'm not going to put my personal agenda onto someone else's child. Yeah, no, fair enough, fair enough. But I mean, um, if you don't mind me asking, do you feel like kids kind of know what they want or what, what they want to Kids do? are very easily influenced. Mm -hmm. kids, are, kids are like puppies. Yeah. And puppies, if you raise a puppy to be a, 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 a vicious dog and you praise him every time he bites and chews and, 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 and kills something, the puppy will think it's a good thing. So kids are like, if you praise a kid on anything, whether that's negative or positive, it can, uh, it can affect their future. So if you're raising a kid to go punch people up and you tell your son every time, yeah, well done, you punched him up, well done. What's he going to be like when he's an adult? He's going to think he has to punch every man up. Yeah. Right, if you're raising a kid to be outspoken and gentle, then they're going to be like that. So if you're, if you're telling your kid, no, you know, we hate all LGBTQ people. I don't like them. Evil. Then what are they going to believe? They won't even have a thought for themselves. They're going to say, yeah, dad must be right or mom must be right. Or if you're saying the opposite, saying anyone who doesn't agree with this is, is evil. You know what? It's better just to let, like what I tell my kids, my personal message to them is respect people for who they are, but you don't have to copy them. Mm. Respect them for who they are. You know, you have your beliefs and they have their beliefs, respect them for who they are. But that message is not easy to put in a school or put in with kids and put everything else because everyone says my parents says this or this person says that or what if, if one kid's exposed to the internet they're, they're hearing this about this and they're hearing that. It's very, it's, it's a confusing time. They're so young and they're bringing it down to like primary school now. So kids in year four, five and six. Wow. And they're very young, those kids, isn't it? And now you're bringing that subject in to teach, which is uh, hard. Hard to teach in a way where you don't confuse them. Because they have so many questions that I don't actually have all the answers to. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, what, like it used to be just maths, English and science, but now there's so much more. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. What, what would you say inspires you, like content-wise or just in life, really? That it's not here forever. Right. Okay. Experience, make the most out of whatever you have. If you enjoy something, so like whatever, whatever your enjoyment is, if it's a healthy enjoyment, if it's not, you're not hurting someone, it's like, so if it's a positive enjoyment, experience it to its fullest because you're not here forever man tomorrow is never promised mm. there's no guarantee that you're going to wake up tomorrow there's no guarantee that this i'll see anyone tomorrow in my household what i tell my wife and kids is no matter what we end on we end up the night on a good note mm. whether I, whether i shouted at my door whether she shouted at her brother whether i had an argument with my wife we end on a, we end on a good note because there's no guarantee i'm gonna wake up tomorrow yeah. so my what keeps me going is do you as much as you can right now on this day, today, whatever hour I have left, because there's no guarantee in it. And it, that keeps me going. So every time I wake up, I'm like, yeah, cool. I've got another chance to do more. Then I've got another chance to do more. Then I've got another chance to do more. And I'm going to keep going whether I'm 70. At, but we say 70, but half of us might not even reach 70. Some of us might go at 40 or 50, you know what I mean? Some of us go at 30. So it just, it's just not thinking that I'm going to be, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm never see 100. Yeah. How many people actually get to see 100? You know what I mean? So doing the most in whatever I have. Now that's good, that's good. And what would you say to someone that's inspiring to be a content creator? Oh, go for it, man. Go for it. It doesn't matter, go for it. Because like, there's, there's, there's 100 million people doing it. Yeah. But you might be unique. You might be the unique one, but you're, 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 you're slowing yourself down because of doubt. A lot of the time people don't even look at you. When you're walking down the street and you think people are watching you, a lot of time people are not watching you. Mm. And you might be in, but okay, what if my family says this, my family says that? Listen, people always doubt you when you're starting off, but when you made it, they start clapping. They're saying I was there from the beginning. Yeah. So you have to go for it. If you don't do it, someone else is going to do it. And that could have been you. That's what it is. You don't want, you don't want to live in fear of missing out. Or that's fear it. Of, yeah, that's, yeah, that's the biggest problem ever. No, I agree. I agree. All right, so... You obviously married quite young, you yeah. said at 19. Um, and you said a lot of your friends are married as well. Yeah, a few of my friends, yeah, five, four of them, yeah. Okay, right, right, right. Did they, did they marry young as well? Ooh, two did. Yeah. yeah, two did. Would you say that's more because of religion or because of... Oh, definitely religion. Yeah, okay. Definitely religion. As a Muslim, it's like, it's really encouraged, isn't it? It's encouraged to get married as soon as possible. It gets... 
it, get, it gets rid of a lot of distractions, a lot of urges, a lot of distractions, a lot of time wasted. Right? You get rid of it straight away. Yeah. Is it easy to get married now in 2023? Psh, no. It's a different time, a different era. I guess I, I took a chance and I put faith into it and it worked out for me. Okay. It might not be the same for everyone. I'm not going to sit here and tell everyone to get married young. You know? like, I knew my wife prior to getting married. I didn't just meet her on the day, you know what I mean? Like, we, were, we were friends, then we became partners, and then I said, you know, let's take this a step further. What, what age did you meet her? Ooh. I'd say, what, 14? Okay, right, right. That's nice, yeah. We've been together since we were... Actually, I started, I, asked her, like, I started dating when we were 14. Mm. But I've known her since I was, like, 10, 11, 11. All right. How, how did you meet her? We, we lived in an area with my neighbour. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, Your next door story. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. It's more old, yeah. I swear, it is. It is. It's mad. Yeah. It's mad. And even my friend, the two that are married, like, we knew each other from the same circle, same group. Oh, wow. Wow. So it was fate, I guess. Yeah. One of them has two, three kids. The other one's got two. Like, yeah, it's mad. Oh, wow. Is, is your wife uh, from... Is she Somali? Oh no, she's from Portugal. Okay, she's Portuguese. Yeah. Okay, cool. Different culture. Was it was it quite hard to you know? You would think of it was, but I guess due to the fact that our parents were neighbours, mm. it wasn't. Okay, right, right. Because you have that understanding that everyone knows each yeah. other, and yeah. and at the same time, like people always wonder, like culture, you know, is it is it hard to get married for people of different culture? I always, I, 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 I how do I say it? I break it down like this. If you grew up in ends, yeah, you have a particular culture within the ends. Doesn't matter what country you're from, we understand each other. If you're one of the Mandem, if you're one of the Garden, whatever, you understand each other. Yeah. Doesn't matter whether you're from Pakistan, doesn't matter whether you're from Lebanon. If you grew up in ends, there's a culture we understand. And that's what makes it easy for me and my wife to be together because we grew up together in the same ends. We, under we understood our banter, we understood the way we talk, body language, everything. Like, yeah, we might have different languages back home, but our f my first language is English, her first language is English, and then it goes on from there. Now, if you're talking about somebody who grew up in another country coming here, and then another woman who grew up in another country coming here, then, then, then they're getting married, that might be hard. Yeah. That's when I think, yeah, it might be hard, you know what I mean? Because you're both, English is not your, your first language, this and that, not, not all your family. Like me, bro, 99% of my family speak English. Same with her. So like, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a thing where we're going to come together and everyone's going to be quiet and always talking. It, 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 was, it was calm, it was calm. And Alhamdulillah, it worked out. That's good, man. That's I reckon good. if I didn't get married, I probably wouldn't be with her by now. Do you think your life would be completely different? <sighs> so different. Yeah. So different, bro. Hella different. So what, what would you say to people who's looking to, to get married soon? Or who's thinking about it? Don't wait. Don't waste your time. Don't just go for it. All right, cool. It might not work out, but at least you tried. You know, in life things don't work out, but like if you're so worried about the, 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 the failure part, but how many of the most successful people in the world failed numerous times before things actually got right, you know what I mean? Like, you have to just try. You're dating someone, okay, what's the, like, me, my, me personally, in my eyes, whether it's a religious thing or cultural thing, why are you dating for 15 years? Why are you dating for seven, eight years? Because if you deep it, yeah, if you got married the first few years, then you would be married for five years. And then we would have had a, tough, a, a better bond, innit? Yeah. I hear stories of people saying, yeah, I've been together for 15 years. I say, what the heck are you not doing? <laughs> why, 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 why are you 35 and 45 saying my girlfriend? <laughs> that's what, in my head, that sounds like such a young thing to say, innit? Yeah. Just go for it, man. But then I do realise, what I didn't know was a culture shock for me, was that like, when you get married Islamically, we don't always necessarily do it by, by like, you don't get married by law. Mm. And I didn't realise when it comes to, like, divorce, stuff gets taken away. Nowadays, people are starting to get more worried about the prenups and all this, like, oh, yeah, what, she takes my house, what, she takes this. And I'm like, you got a point, but you're already setting negatives yeah. before you even got to your end goal. Like, it's so weird. How do you love someone, love someone so much to get married, and then you start thinking, but well, what if she leaves me? Why would you get, don't get married. If you, if, you, if you feel like that with someone, don't get married. Yeah, no, I agree. If you feel like, yeah, but she might take my, and then, yeah, don't get married. That's, it, it shouldn't feel like that. The person you were with, should, you should have so much like, trust and confidence with and build together that you're not worried about that. I think a lot of young people aren't getting married how they did, you know, like,
back in our parents' age oh, and yeah, stuff definitely. like that. They're waiting a lot longer now, isn't it? What's, what's your thoughts on that? Why do, why do you think that is? Because you've got that 30-year-olds that are not married now. Stuff's expensive. Mm. You know, if you're a man, that's, uh, you've gone through stuff, so it's taken you longer to be established. It's not going to be easy because uh, sisters now have higher expectations financially. High expectations. And if you're not meeting those needs sometimes, it's not easy. Same way the guys also have high expectations. I wanna, I'm, uh, we talk about women, but guys have high expectations. You want, you get a man, an average man, very average, who wants a high maintenance woman. But his pockets don't live up to those standards. <laughs> so he's complaining that she's expensive. I said, but you've chosen a high maintenance woman. You have to maintain her now. Yeah. That if you can't keep up with her, you've got to lower your standards. Mm -hmm. But then the same way, you know, like, it's not an easy thing. It's hard now. Everything's about housing is expensive. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to rent, yeah, in London, yeah, you, you, you just want to rent a house. The average, the guarantor has to earn is about 60K. If you're a first-class immigrant here, no one in your family is earning 60k yet. You might be the only one earning it, but you don't know anyone else in your family earning 60k. So then, what do you do? You're stuck. Yeah. And you can't enter the council because the council's like, wait, you earn 40k. We're not helping you. So you council's not helping you. The rent is too much. What do, what do people do? They end up leaving. Like it's too much, and then some people delay it. Some people don't. It's fate. If it's gonna happen. It happens, but right now, the way I've seen it, if I, if I wasn't married now to my wife and I was trying to get married now, I wouldn't know what to do. Okay, right. I find it too hard, bro. Mm. Well, I find it really hard. Everything's too expensive. My, I'm old school, innit? So, like, my talking skills online, when I hear people online dating, and I said, wait, you message these people, like, you got a message every day. You got to like, yeah, yeah. I said, no, that's, that's long. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, <laughs> I can't do that, bro. I can't message people every... I don't even message my missus every day. If you, if you see our WhatsApp, I'm, I'm so, like me, I can talk, like right now, I can talk to you face to face for days. On the phone, I'm dry. You think I might hate you. <laughs> like, I'm just dead, I'm terrible with my phone. So imagine what I would do, bro. Someone would be like, I'll be at work and I'll go, hey, how's your day? I'm like, why are you asking me this dumb question? The day's not done. <laughs> what's, what's a popular Somali word? Or, what, or is it like one that you call each other like bro? Or like a... Well, that's just Walalo, isn't it? Walalo's bro. What is it? Walalo. Walalo? Yeah, it's your brother. Okay. But then there's one word that's my favorite word, bro. Finesse. You know how to say finesse? Koalas. Koalas. Is that don't, you, do, you don't want to get koalas, bro, in the ends, in the trust <laughs> me. Like, a lot of the men will koalas you, bro. I thought that was slang. Is it, is it from Somali culture? Is it from language? All oh, right, right. Because I hear a lot of rappers. That's the thing, though. Like, same with the, um, the Caribbean era where it, uh, the English language has picked up some words now and it's yeah. become part of the vocabulary. The same thing's happening. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what Britain does, isn't it? Isn't it? That does, bro. <laughs> like, our language, not the Queen's English, yeah. but like the actual language on the streets is mixed. Yeah. You hear everyone saying, like, like bro, we're picking up words of like, Gujarati, Punjabi, yeah. picking up Somali words. Now, back in the days, I could say something and no one knows what I'm saying. Now I'm saying, Wallahi, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But back in the days, yeah, I could lie to my brethren, he wouldn't say to me, say Wallahi. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I go to anyone and, I, and they're like, yeah, do you know what, Abdul, say Wallahi. I say, how do you know that, bruv? Because yeah. I know you can't lie if you say Wallahi. Because <laughs> it's, it's the same, bro. They caught us out now, bruv. Because yeah. I, I, yeah, even a lot of rappers are using koalas and stuff. Even Jay Huss. If he said, I had to finesse, I had to do a koala. Koalas. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, it's, bro, you'd be surprised, bro. But is it, you know what? Let's not, like, when you, I don't know if, you, like, when I go on holiday, yeah, I don't realise how diverse London is, man. Like we see everyone here, bruv. Yeah. We see everyone here, bro. And then, then, then you, you go, go on holiday and you realise, wow, it's not like that in other countries. Other countries, maximum two races, isn't it? Like you might actually see two, two, two races, nothing more, nothing less. Here you see the whole world. Yeah. Like the other day, bro, I, I was walking down the street and I went to a Puerto Rican guy. I said, what the heck is a Puerto Rican guy doing in London, bro? <laughs> I said, is it getting that mad here? <laughs> like London's good for representation, though. Like you, you London makes like, you aware. London makes you aware of so many cultures that like you, your negative thoughts can get broken down quickly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you don't, if you don't, that like that, the thing you said, the fear of the unknown. Like a lot of people when it comes to culture, there's a big fear of the unknown. Like we don't, we don't know these people. They might be thinking this. They might be. And then you actually meet them. They're like, oh, they're actually normal people. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you meet the, like if you meet a, a Jewish person on a normal day, just, just as normal as you, just his faith might be different. But his brain's ticking the same as you. 
He's trying, he's trying to get the bag just like you, do you know what I mean? He's going home to his wife and kids just like you. Just a different setting. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And what's, uh, what's your socials? So TikTok is Chinny and Co. C-H-I-N-N-Y and C-O. And my Instagram is Abdul Chin. That's A-B-D-U-L-L-C-H-I-N. Those are my main platforms. Follow me on that. Peace.